This is The Fitting Lab, an EVE Online ship fitting video series. Today, we're taking a closer look at what is a veritable gold mine for the new player. They're nimble, they're robustly equipped, they can break into any lock, they can even go invisible. It's the Tech One Exploration Frigate Line. What's going on YouTube? It's James Ong here, aka Captain Ace Rico, and welcome back to The Fitting Lab. On the show today, I'm very happy to say that I do have a guest with me. Uh, I have managed to wrangle one of my former CEOs into coming onto The Fitting Lab, Johnny Splunk. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. No worries. I'm very happy to have Johnny on the show today. Johnny is the founding member or one of the founding members of EVE Scout, which is uh, pretty much like, well, it's one of the bigger EVE Online corporations. And I think the only uh, pure exploration corp out there. So Johnny does have a lot of knowledge when it comes to exploration. Um, and Johnny is also a Twitch streamer. So if you guys want to check out a good EVE Online Twitch stream, you can go ahead and check out Johnny's stream. Uh, what days are you streaming at the moment, Johnny? I normally stream uh, Thursdays and Saturdays at 0330 uh, UTC time or EVE time. Awesome. Okay, so I will uh, I will link Johnny's stream in the description of this video. So if you want to check out Johnny's stream, it will be linked down there. Uh, okay, let's get straight on with exploration fitting here. And first off, we're going to go and look at the bonuses for our Tech 1 Exploration Frigates. Now, all of the bonuses for your T1 Frigates, they're all the same. So you're just looking at a 7.5% bonus to core and combat probe uh, scanning strength. That's for your racial frigate skill. So you just get a little boost there per level in that skill that you train. And like I said, that is the same for all of the exploration frigs. Uh, then you just get the roll bonus here. So just a plus five flat bonus to your virus strength for the relic and data analyzers. Uh, now in terms of like slot layout for these, I won't go over the slot layout for each ship. We are actually going to cover four different frigates here today, uh, four different ships here today. So, you know, we might talk about the slot layout when we present each of the fits that we're going to do here, but obviously all the slot layouts are different, and that's that's really where you get the difference in the Tech 1 frigates. Otherwise, they're pretty well, they're pretty well all interchangeable, uh, to be honest. Um, now, before we get into the actual fits that we're going to show you today. Uh, Johnny and I have three key points, three key guidelines that you should just keep in your mind when you are fitting a Tech 1 Exploration Frigate. Uh, so Johnny, do you want to start us off with the three things that you've got for people here that, um, that they should keep in their mind when they're fitting a Tech 1 Exploration Frig? Absolutely, yeah. So there's three key modules that make any ship an exploration ship. So even though we're talking about T1 frigates that are purpose-built for exploration. So the first one is a probe launcher in order for you to scan down the signatures in order to do relic or data sites. Uh, you're definitely going to need a probe launcher. So you'll have that and you'll want to carry at least 16 probes, I'd recommend. Yeah, I definitely, uh, as far as... I definitely always yeah, try and carry 16 because you can, like in some situations, you can lose a set of probes. Although they did fix yeah, that a little bit, lose. but yeah. Yeah, that can happen. It, it only happens in kind of moments where you disconnect at downtime or if you have a, a bad connection. That's when you'll typically lose them. Uh, they always return to you when you go through as a wormhole or a gate or hop in a station, that sort of thing. But also just from a utility standpoint, while you have one set of probe out, you can reload another set of probes. And probes do reload while you're cloaked. So all you have to do is initiate that um, reload before you cloak up and it will complete the reload even though you're cloaked up uh, so that's the kind of primary module after that 
you would be looking for some sort of analyzer, either be a relic analyzer or data analyzer. So the data analyzer is for hacking the data sites, and then a relic analyzer is for doing relic sites. So uh, pretty self-explanatory there. And you can't have an exploration ship without one of those. And you don't never necessarily need to carry both of them, right? What, what do you normally bring, uh, Captain? Um, I, I think on the fit that I'm showing, I do have both of the analyzers there because like i've always been a massive fan of ghost sites although actually now i think about mm -hmm. it ghost sites you can use a relic analyzer on the ghost sites can't you these days no you can only use data sites. oh it's only... data analyzer so yeah, yeah that's right okay so it used to be that you could use a relic or a data i believe yeah oh, yeah maybe yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure it did used to be before they made a little tweak to them and another little tweak, which kind of annoyed me that I won't get into too much. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I do, I do carry the both because I really like doing the ghost sites. But definitely, like, if you're looking at like just a pure what's optimal type thing, you could probably just carry a relic analyzer, I reckon. Right. Yeah. Typically, relic sites have a higher value, especially if you go out to nullsec and wormhole space. Mm. So you'll find some explorers that just ditch the data analyzer all completely, and they're a little bit spooked by those ghost sites. They don't want to lose their ship, so they avoid them anyways. And then finally, the last module that you want to um, consider is some sort of cloaking device. So there's three different types. You have prototype, improved, and then you have a covert ops. So covert ops requires higher skill levels, but it also um, has the most utility. You can warp while you're cloaked, whereas the prototype and the improved, you, have, you can't warp. And also when you have the covert cloak you can move at full speed while underneath cloak as well so you can kind of move around can't activate modules that sort of thing but uh it definitely gives you more utility uh but it's not necessary to even be an explorer to have a cloaking device all that that basically does is give you an opportunity to scan and maybe get out of some tight situations um, with the cloak but it's not necessary in fact alphas can't even use a cloak yeah like obviously i think i think for an exploration frigate you know the ability to just be invisible seems like uh seems like it would be a pretty useful kind of thing um, it certainly is the only thing is like when you're at a site a cloak doesn't give you any help while you're hacking a you know a can that sort of thing yeah so obviously really yeah what yeah where you're navigating and scanning it gives you that extra kind of i don't know time to relax a little bit and yeah also i guess the cloak micro warp drive trick is like you know, if you've, yeah. if you've got that, then you have the ability to do like an insta warp where you're completely invulnerable for the time when you're aligning, you know. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, if, if we have the choice to have a cloak or not have a cloak, try to go for a cloak. 100%. It's, it's only under these certain kind of situations that you wouldn't carry one, I suppose. Just to add on what Johnny has said there. So uh, I've just probably got two points to add on to what Johnny said. So... Just generally, when you're fitting a Tech 1 Exploration Frigate, you want to try and fit to your style of flying. So, what yeah. are your strengths? Like, do you have a lot of trouble with, say, the hacking game? If you have a lot of trouble with the hacking minigame, you might want to consider putting a hacking rig on instead of a scanning rig. Vice versa, if you have a bit of trouble with scanning, you're not particularly quick at getting your signatures down, then maybe you want to fit uh, to of the of the um scanning rigs rather than the hacking rig there um and the other thing is with your flying style you know how risky do you want to be do you like to hack when there's people in local or are you just going to always look to hack in empty systems if you're always looking to hack in empty systems i'd say probably you just want to fit like full agility mods but maybe if you're someone who likes to be a little bit more risky and potentially uh give yourself the opportunity to get scrammed then you know maybe you want to put warp core stabs onto uh your tech one frig there so that's kind of a bit of a choice there kind of depending on how you like to fly i suppose uh the other thing that you want to keep in mind with tech one frigates is that you really have no tank with them so if you get shot most likely you're kind of dead pretty much so how are you going to get around the problem of not having any tank? Again, that's going to come back to your fitting. So you could look at, like, one of the fits Johnny's got is something that stops you, like, pretty much you can't, almost can't be 
combat probed. So that's one way that you can be, okay, if, if there's someone in system, I'm going to go to my safe and I know that pretty much no one can get me here. It's going to be extremely difficult. They need like a specialized combat, ha uh, combat probing ship with maybe even implants to get you. Uh, so you know that then you're a hundred percent safe. Uh, or again, just using the agility and the speed of a Tech 1 frigate and really fitting, you know, a lot of agility mods, uh, some sp speed mods like a nanofiber or something so that you can just avoid people and yeah, get around that problem of not having any tank by just staying the hell away from anyone who might want to, uh, might want to gank you basically. Um, but yeah, that is, so that's, that's the basic principles of fitting a Tech 1 exploration frigate. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the actual fits that we have for you here. Um, so I'm going to start here with a probe. Now, this is, I think if I had to choose one Tech 1 exploration frigate to use for pure exploration, I reckon it would probably be the probe. That being said, like, um, it's, it's personal preference and also, honestly, all of the Tech 1 frigates, I kind of feel, especially when it comes to pure exploration, I kind of feel they're all pretty interchangeable. So really fly what makes you happy. Uh, but this one here, it's pretty, it's pretty standard. It's pretty, um, it's pretty, yeah, run of the mill. There's a few different things that you could do. So like I said, if you have trouble with the hacking game, you could maybe drop one of these grav capacitors here and put a, is it a memetic algorithm bank or something? There's a, there's a mod that gives you extra, um, extra hacking virus. No, not virus strength. I think it's coherence that it gives you. Um, there'll be one of those mods showing on one of Johnny's fits. So you'll be able to see that there. Um, we do have a cloak on this one. If you're an alpha clone, you won't be able to use this. So just don't fit it. Um, this still works perfectly well without a cloak. It's just the cloak gives you a little bit of extra flexibility. So like I said, you can do the cloak micro warp drive trick, which it is something that I've explained in a video, but it might potentially be difficult for you to find. It's one of my new bro like uh, guide videos. I should probably do like a video exclusively on the cloak micro warp drive trick. But yeah, you could just Google that actually and... Uh, there'll be an explanation of what that is there for you. It basically lets you insta-warp um, in a pretty safe kind of way. Uh, but yeah, just generally with this, I'm just trying to be... I'm just trying to be very slippery. So we're trying to be uh, fast aligning with this one um, rather than going for the warp core stabs. So yeah, for, for my flying style, this is probably what I'd go with. Although... Like back in the day when I did explore, I was someone who pretty well always fit warp core stabs because I, I did like to be a little bit risky with the exploration. That being said, it didn't always necessarily pay off for me. And that's the thing with exploring. Like if you die, you've guaranteed that you're going to make no money for, you know, in that ship. So yeah, you really do want to avoid dying as much as possible, I suppose. Um, and yeah. This is, yeah, this is a pretty standard little Tech 1 exploration frig. You can do both of the um, signature types here. You've got a data and a relic analyzer. Um, and yeah, aligns, aligns pretty quick. It's pretty slippery. And uh, you'll get pretty decent scanning strength out of this one here as well. Um, Johnny, what were you going to do now? Yes. Is it the uh, Omega Heron? Yeah, I'd like to do that. Awesome, awesome. Let's go and take a look at that one. Uh, Johnny, what's the general thing here with the Omega Heron? Well, what I really like about the Heron is that I, in my opinion, has the ideal slot layout for exploration. So there is no other T1 frigate that has five mid slots. And so when you start adding up a some sort of propulsion module, either micro warp drive or afterburner, you have a relic analyzer, you have a data analyzer, start to run out of slots on a lot of other ships as far as other utilities. So if you want to add tank or other sort of things. And as you mentioned, there's so many different ways to fly the, you know, these ships. It just depends on your style. Mm. And I, I just find the Heron is like the most versatile uh, as far as I can make this very combat ready on top of it. And so that 
it just kind of lends itself, I think, for exploration, in my opinion. Just, um, just the, me looking main, at this quickly, yeah. sorry, just looking at this quickly, yeah. if this is, so oh, this is for an Omega, okay, yeah. So for an Omega, you reckon um, without having a uh, scanning rig in there, you reckon an Omega clone is going to be able to scan pretty well everything that you're going to want to do in terms of uh, exploration? Yeah, generally, all, all you need really if you want to scan down absolutely everything that you'd want to do as a kind of T1 frigate explorer is maybe add some sisters probes instead, substitute those, mm -hmm. and you'd get your scanning strength typically, I think, up to about 72. Yeah, And that is enough to scan down every site in um, K space or known space. In wormhole space, it's actually easier to scan down. In fact, I can't get my scan strength down low enough to uh, make it impossible to scan. Things. So even Meaning faction, a faction simple. relics easier in wormholes? That doesn't. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. So yep. They're actually the signatures themselves are actually easier to scan. That's correct. Huh. Okay. So an alpha explorer can scan down everything in a wormhole, whereas in K space it can be a little difficult unless they have uh, sisters probes. Right. Okay. I actually didn't. I didn't even know that. I just assumed that it's the same site, so it's going to be the same everywhere. Well, I think it used to be that way for a while, but then when uh, CCP added alphas, at that same time, they made a change to the oh, way the okay. work. Yeah, and that's... I'm not sure if it was related to alphas or it was just the timing of it, because also wormhole people were complaining that scanning was too hard mm -hmm. or took too long, I should say. So kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I see. I see. That seems a good yeah. change to me. It seems a good change. Yeah, I like it. So the, the main thing about this ship is that it aligns in only three seconds. And I find that to be, you know, relatively the best you could do for a T1 frigate of this type. Mm -hmm. And that'll allow you to get off of gates a lot quicker. There's very few things that can lock you up in time. Um, even a stealth bomber will have a hard time locking you up. It all depends on uh, their skills and also your signature radius. Uh, like on this Heron, I think we're up to about 42. So I think default is about 38 or so. And so there's a little bit of a bump. So it'll make maybe a stealth bomber that decloaks on you near a site. Uh, it might, they might be able to catch you. But my suggestion always is, is while you're hacking, have some other celestial already selected. So if you see something come up on your overview, just click as quickly as possible. You don't have to, don't hesitate. Um, other than that, uh, we're looking at a little bit of tanks. So we have a small uh, shield extender and an adaptive and vulnerability field. And all this stuff is T1. So it can all be upgraded and, you know, improved. Mm, uh, yeah, from, okay. Yep. There's a lot of fitting room on there's this ship. There's fitting room you can make a lot yeah, of change. Yep. Yeah. And as you mentioned earlier, I, honestly, I, I always kind of, uh, when it comes to rigs, it's kind of difficult to uh, choose the right one. And I think it depends on the situation and what you're trying to achieve. And so on this one, we have a memetic algorithm bank that helps with data uh, sites, gives you 10 extra coherence. And then we also have an emotion, um, emission scope sharpener that helps with relic sites, gives you 10 extra. But I also could easily swap these out for the gravity capacitor upgrades that give you the scanning strength. It, it, it all kind of depends on what you're looking to achieve. Mm, mm. So in general, I think um, this ship is quite capable. It puts out about 57 DPS has a little bit of a tank, a little bit of resist, which is nice. Um, and it moves pretty quickly. I think in the low slots, some people might go for inertial stabilizers, which are, um, give you kind of rel actually like better align time. Yeah. But, but it's a little bit yeah. overkill. It's a little bit overkill in the situation because we, we basically still achieve our three second align time yep. with the yep. fibers. And, and so, Inertial stabilizers will give you a, a penalty on your signature radius, which makes it easier for you to lock up. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't move quite as fast as the nanofibers. Mm. The nanofibers yep. actually keep you moving a little bit quicker. As um, so, But that's all kind of personal preference, in my opinion, as well. I, uh, The nanofibers, the drawback on the nanofibers is that you lose some uh, tank, but it's it's marginal. Like, it's not very much at all. And I, so, I like the speed here. I mean, yeah, hot, you can get, like, almost 5K out of this, which, like, if any, if, if you've ever tried to hunt a frigate before, like a Tech 1 frigate or a Covops frigate or something, the fact that they're so fast aligning and so uh, rapid in terms of their actual base speed, yeah, they're really, like, really legitimately difficult to catch. So... 
yeah, I, I, I agree with you. The, uh, the, the nanofibers there is probably what I'd go with. And I can see you've even got the, um, the meta one there rather than the tech two. So you could even upgrade that again further with skills and stuff. Absolutely. And then the only other preference I think that someone w might want to make is for the light missile launcher. They could go instead of that, they could go to rockets, mm -hmm. which has a little bit more DPS, but less range. Whereas the missile launcher might be able to do a little bit, like the light missile launcher might go a little bit further. But honestly, a lot of times your engagements are up close and personal because you don't get to pick the engagement a lot of times. But if you wanted to, there's a possibility that, you know, this will give you a little extra utility. You can kite a little bit. So um yeah I'll, other than that you can upgrade your probe launcher to attack two um yeah it's it's a, a great ship are you actually thinking with the missile launcher there that it can be like a defensive sort of weapon well any kind of dps is going to help you in a situation especially against maybe a less qualified um pilot i guess a stealth so... bomber or something yeah you could probably you could probably even get a stealth bomber yeah, at you, least push I, it yeah, off you with, think, with a little bit of DPS there, yeah. Yeah, I'd take that fight. If they were running torpedoes, mm. if they came with their own maybe light missiles or or rockets, then that might be a little scary. But um it would be worth a try. That's that's good. I like I like the little uh I like this little fit here. That's that's yeah, and there's a, like you said, there's a lot of flexibility with this here. And yeah, with the rigs it's the rigs is just it's kind of just personal preference and flavor like and like i said flying style as well how you want to fly absolutely um did you want to move on to the imicus now yeah i think we can go through this pretty quickly because we kind of went over a little bit of things so you'll notice the slot layout's a little bit different we have four mid slots and three low slots versus before with the heron we had five uh, mid slots and we had two low slots so we still are trying to achieve our align times because it's still important. Mm -hmm. So you want to be aiming underneath that three second mark. So that's why we did just two nanofibers. In my opinion, doing anything more, even if we add an initial stabilizer, just doesn't uh, bring extra to the table for us. And so you'll notice the rigs are the same. Uh, we added a little bit of tank, but we don't have an uh, adaptive vulnerability field. And we're going with the, you know, the type of weapon system in the high slot that we, um, can with the Imicus versus the Heron. So you'll notice the low slot, how we've maybe shifted from using the adaptive vulnerability field to using a damage control too. Uh, in my opinion, if you have a free low slot, uh, damage control twos are, you know, a very cheap, uh, but effective module. Like I think they're always a good value in a lot of ships. And yeah. So this it is, gives you just it's nice to have tank. that little bit of extra tank, isn't it? Uh, yeah, if you kind of are running out of ideas for your low slot, I think that's uh, always a good spot. But I, the damage control, too, in my opinion, is probably one of those, you know, value. Um, there's just a lot of value in it as far as yeah. slot there's cost a, uh, there's, to what you gain on it. There's just so many more ships that will fit a damage control than won't fit a damage control, for sure. Right, yeah. Uh, so that's basically it. We still have some drones. We have the same drone system between the Heron and the Omega, uh, or between the Emicus and the Heron. So uh, the, the one nice thing about the Emicus is that it can actually fly four light drones instead of three light drones. So oh, we can actually, actually put have four a little in more space, damage. is it? Yeah, you can. Huh, good one, it okay. Three mega, mega versus 15. So it actually does more DPS. If you are looking for maybe the opportunity to maybe uh, catch other explorers, I think the Emicus can do really well especially if you were to swap out a mid slot module for a scram or something and you wanted to hop on somebody else so normally i'll carry hobgoblins with me those do the most damage but they are a little bit slower than maybe like a warrior so you definitely want to bring that or you could bring ecm drones it's kind of like another way to to fly um either the heron or the emicus because maybe that might be the thing that saves you but as you mentioned earlier once you're caught you don't have much tank you're gonna have to get you know lucky quick mm. so yeah as a general rule you could almost say if you're caught you're dead in a tech one uh exploration frigate particularly generally speaking yeah um because again you don't get to pick the fight so someone's gonna likely come with something that kind of rock paper scissors they win awesome awesome i like i like the imicus there and it does look like you definitely could particularly with some skills get 
a lot more DPS even out of this. I could see you pushing over 100 DPS out of this one here, which, yeah, if you wanted to be like a uh, go and kill people and explore type fit, I could definitely see this working here with a Tech 1 frigate, which people aren't going to expect as well, which is another thing in PvP, having the surprise factor is definitely... Uh, is definitely something that will play in your in your favor quite a lot. Yeah, it's certainly a way that you can kind of feign uh, that you're maybe not capable and then turn turn the tables. It's, that's always fun. Thing yeah, this this does look fun. I might even try this sometime. I do like it. Yeah. Yeah, and again, it's all tech one, so you could even up, upgrade those drones to tech two or yeah, some with other kind of with tech two drones, you're definitely going to get over a hundred DPS out of this for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, shall we move on to the Alpha Wormhole Heron? Absolutely. This is one of my favorite fits right now in all of EVE. Uh, primarily because Alphas can't fit a cloak. So yeah. until that changes, you know, they, they've made a lot of changes to Alphas from when they were first introduced to what they are now, right? We can fly battleships now and we can have T2 modules and all kinds of it's stuff. It's quite really nice great. what you can get from an Alpha, yeah. Just quickly here, should I? Yeah. what script should I be loading for this? ECCM or... You definitely want to be loading the ECCM scripts in this. Okay. And so those go with a compact booster. So this is what's going to look really different to us. We, instead of having a cloak, we get to add a little bit more DPS by adding a light missile launcher. And again, fitting could be difficult. So I would, you could swap that out for rockets. And then all of a sudden, you'll notice that you'll have a lot more fitting room, which is great. And then you're going to notice that we don't have really any tank on here. But the main point of this is I would call this is not, we're not cloaking with this ship. We're, we're going stealth. And so stealth ships you can still see on D-scan, right? Whereas cloaks, once mm, you cloak up, mm. you don't see something on directional scan anymore. So it, you still kind of have visibility or, or people that are maybe hunting you know that you're there. But uh, there's this really neat thing that happens with combat probing and the signature radius of your ship also complement it with ECCM. So a lot of people, if you look in the fitting window, maybe mouse over the part that has your... Um, I think it's your sensor strength. You'll notice that it has like a little tool tip that tells you that um, that how how this affects also being combat scanned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm looking at that right now. Yep. Yeah. So these ECCM scripts, uh, coupled with your low signature radius, make it um, very very difficult to be combat scanned down. That's your biggest enemy as an alpha. That's why cloaks are so great. You can be sitting there cloaked up for 30 minutes scanning, and no one can do anything about it. But when it comes to this uh, alpha, it's, most people are very, very um, timid about going out mm. because they think... Because you can't cloak, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, or they might think, you know what, I'm not going to have fun doing exploration unless I can cloak, so I'm just going to subscribe and go Omega. Yeah. In my opinion, I, I don't think that's necessary. Um, uh, yeah, so, I agree, agree. Yeah, so you'll see some different things on here. So the sensor boosters you want to run 24-7. The minute you come into a system, yep. you activate those. And this ship is cap stable. Um, it, you can run every single module, okay, mm. nonstop. Mm. And you wouldn't be running the probe launcher nonstop, and you won't be running a relic or data analyzer nonstop. In fact, whenever you run a relic or data analyzer, just right click on the module down at the very bottom and set auto repeat to off. That'll save some capacitor. All you need to do is cycle one time when you activate it on a um, yep. data container. So, um, this makes it very easy to fly for an alpha. There's not a whole lot of thinking that goes into it. Just turn on your sensor boosters. You don't have to maintain cap. And what you'll do is you will find yourself a safe spot in space. And my suggestion is that you automatically just kind of aligned to some other bookmark that you might have, another safe, another celestial, anything other than where you're at, just be moving. And you can also run your afterburner at the same time. So the idea is that if someone were to scan you down, then you're already ready to warp. You've already to that got velocity, point. yeah, yep. Yeah, and so you get basically an insta warp at that point. You're not having to align and get out. Mm. Now, what's really great about this, Captain, is that you kind of mentioned early on that it takes a lot to scan something like this down. Let me kind of spell it out real quick. Mm -hmm. It takes someone in a T2 exploration ship with uh, complementary modules. We're talking sisters probe launcher, sisters probes, a whole bunch of scanning gear on it. Uh, tech like level five skills and scanning for like astrometrics and things like that. Yep. And then 800 million worth of skill points. I mean, sorry, of uh, sorry, of implants. 800 million of of implants to scan this down. 
So yeah. <laughs> it makes it very, very difficult. It's like this David Goliath sort of situation. I kind of look at it because here you are flying a ship that's like worth less than 2 million ISK and yep. you're de defeating somebody who has a lot more time invested in the game and a lot more invested in their uh, character as far as implants, that sort of thing. And I've, I've been accused of hacking because they could see me in space <laughs> on and they couldn't scan me down. And so they would hail me in local in wormhole space and go, um, how are you doing this? Right. And yeah. So it's, that's what I really find novel about this and a really nice way to really give an advantage back to an alpha that feels uh, maybe discouraged or um, underqualified. So basically um, with and, this one, yeah. you're a hundred percent safe as long as no one's on grid with you. If they're off grid, they just, they pretty much can't get you. And the likelihood that someone is going to be around who's got a dedicated uh, combat scanning ship with the implants as well is like extremely kind of low, to be honest. Yeah, I, I would say I've probably spent over 100 hours in a ship like this, even as an alpha. So I don't have level five skills or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just testing it out. And I've never been caught yet. So the odds are very low. I'm not saying it's zero, but it's very low, like you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. I, You could spend many, many hours out in this and not get scanned down. And like Johnny said, even if you do, just make sure you're pre-aligned to something. You've got the afterburner on. And what that does mean is like if someone does get the full hit on you and then they warp to you they're going to warp when they initiate warp they'll warp to the spot where you are and by the time they arrive there you know you might already be 10 15 20 kilometers away and they can't scram you or they can't point you at that at that range potentially that's right yeah you're moving 1219 meters a second um or you know over about a thousand depending on your skills yeah i, I guess for an alpha would be a little bit lower Mm. Um, and yeah, so it just might take them a little bit of time to get to you. And that gives you just a little extra margin in case you're, you know, maybe busy scanning and your alphas are new. They're not quite you know, maybe aware of their surroundings. Those maybe more experienced players are. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. I love, I love the fits you've got for us there. They're, they're, they're really great. And the, the alpha fit here. Yeah. This really gives a lot of power to the alpha character player for an exploration sort of frigate yeah the one thing that might change and i think this would just be based on the particular alpha's experience would be those rigs again maybe swapping them out for a gravity capacitor upgrades to make scanning a little bit faster because it's difficult yeah as an alpha yeah but like we mentioned before honestly go to wormhole space this is what this is most uh capable at and uh you can scan down pretty much anything even with this setup yeah and if you wanted to drop a rig off this, drop the memetic algorithm bank. That's the data one. Data sites yeah. just generally aren't worth doing as a general rule of thumb. Um, and yeah, it's been that way for years, many, many years, yeah. long before I was playing the game and probably long after I, well, I'm not going to stop playing the game, but probably long after we make this video, it'll still be probably. rubbish and terrible. <laughs> but, as an, but as an alpha, you can, if you're in wormhole space or somewhere, you can still make about five to 10 million isk per site, which for an alpha, that's a lot. Like what I always think about this is that you can replace the ship maybe five times over with one site. Yeah, a hundred percent. Consider yep. if, you, if you're an alpha and you make that first score, even that first site, you know, go back home real quick, drop off that loot. That's basically a, you know, a savings account for later. Mm, mm. Awesome. All right, let's move on to the final fit we've got here, the Combat Salvager Magnate. So I just wanted to throw something a little bit different in here. So this is not um, traditional exploration, I suppose, but I still feel this fits kind of under the exploration category. Now, if I was going to use this, I'd probably go to low sec. That being said, you can take it to null sec. It's going to work perfectly fine there. Um, but I feel like with low sec, it's just a little bit easier to know where the wrecks are going to be. Um, and like, honestly, uh, just going around low sec and looting wrecks, picking up wrecks, you can make, you can make ridiculous money. It's so surprising how much money you can make. And people really don't loot wrecks. It's just not something low sec players do. Um, they're all too busy off getting fights and reshipping and stuff. The looting of the wrecks doesn't always happen. Um, 
And generally, I would say you can probably get between between five to like at a good stretch twenty mil out of a wreck. Um, and yeah, with this little thing here, you can like zip around and um, and just pick up all of those wrecks that people leave behind. You're gonna find the wrecks at um, at the uh, what am I trying to say? At the um, at the plexes, at the combat um, complexes. So like novice outposts, you know, small outposts, etc. Um, and a little bit on gates. More you're going to find them at the plexus, though. Um, with this ship here, we align super, super quick. You're going to get through pretty much any gate camp that you find in low sec. This actually aligns under two seconds. That's with my skills. With um, I actually can have a look here. Let me just alt tab to Pypha and have a quick look at the magnate with alpha skills. So with alpha skills, you get about a three second align time. That's still going to be fine to get through. 99%, well, maybe 90% of, uh, of low sec gate camps. There's not a lot of insta locking low sec gate camps, to be honest. You've also got quite a bit of tank here, so you'll get through a smart bomb. Um, things that you could consider changing with this, you could add, like, you could drop some agility out of this, or potentially even the tank, depending on your, uh, skills. If your skills are a bit better, you could definitely drop some of the tank out and put some, cargo expanders in there so that you can carry more um, more loot. Also, if your salvaging skills are good, you could drop a salvage rig out and again put more cargo there um, to to uh, be able to carry more loot there because like you don't need you don't need amazing salvage skill with the two salvage rigs and say salvaging four, which I think that'll maybe take you. I think it'll maybe take you three or four days to train Salvaging 4, so not a massive investment. Um, and if you've got Salvaging 4 with two Salvage Rigs, you'll be able to salvage anything that you're going to find in low sec in a pretty decent time. And also, honestly, the Salvaging part of it, that's not where the main um, isk with this comes from. The main isk with this comes from looting the actual wrecks. The only things that you probably want to salvage is elite wrecks, which you're not really going to find a hell of a lot of. Uh, anything else is honestly not worth your time. Yeah, don't... I wouldn't salvage anything unless it says elite or advanced wreck or something on it. Um, otherwise, yeah, you're just not really going to get any kind of decent drops out of it. With the elite and, adva and advanced wrecks, though, you can get intact armor plates out of it. So they are worth... they're worth salvaging, for sure. Um... Yeah, but I think I think that is all of the fits that we have for you here today. Um, yeah, so we've done the yeah we've done the three fits from Johnny there, the heron, the two herons, and the imicus, uh, and the probe there, and the magnate. Now all of these fits, as always, will be linked in the description of this video. So if you want to check them out, import them to game, they will be down there. Uh, and also, as I said before, Johnny's stream will be linked in the description of the video. Uh, Johnny, thank you very much for coming on the fitting lab with me here today. Oh, thank you. It was my pleasure. Uh, will we, will we do this again sometime maybe? I would love to. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'd love to have you on again for another fitting lab. Uh, and I'd also love to see you again, viewer, for a future fitting lab video. But for now, from myself and Johnny Splunk, thank you very much for watching this video. And remember, as always, fly dangerous.